In our previous videos, we demonstrated how to make base images for Hyper-V, how to plan your file paths, how to use Windows System Image Manager to prepare these images to cut through some of the red tape. Basically, we're going to uh, deploy this lab and demonstrate the results of that so far. Here I'm demonstrating that you can also mount the image and plant some scripts for uh, the machines once they start up. We'll be demonstrating that as well. Make sure to unmount that by ejecting. And let's get started. So here's our script to create four machines for this PKI lab scenario we're getting ready for. A couple of domain controllers and a couple of PKI servers. You can see it's cruising right along, one machine after the other. Now it's going to add a second volume to each of the machines. One, two, three, and four. There we go. Let's look in. We can see they're starting up now. We included that in part of the script. Go ahead and start the machine. We'll connect up to our first domain controller for Tucson. The biggest objective here is to prepare these machines such that you can get into them via RDP. It's a lot easier than working in a vCenter console. So. That's really what we're going to demonstrate in this video is getting these machines to where they're accessible via RDP. Then we can begin de deploying our lab. You can see I didn't have to click on any of the language or accept the license. All I have to do is input the password that we saved in the Windows System Image Manager. I'm going to go ahead and start getting into my next machine, the Tucson ICA server again here just having to put in the password so we really saved a lot of time and energy not having to click on all those language buttons and accept the license agreement etc I might click back and forth and this video is edited to a great extent. I'm cropping out a lot of pauses uh, where you're waiting for a computer to do something. Uh, your time is valuable and I'm trying to keep these videos down to about 10 minutes. I think that that's a reasonable expectation for your attention span. Uh, it's a reasonable amount of expectation for me to be able to impart some useful information and demonstrate the results of that. I think longer videos uh, tend to get skipped through or not watched at all. I know I've balked at watching uh, hour-long videos that might have contained really interesting information, but it's uh, difficult to look forward to uh, sitting that long through a video. Most of the time I find video on the internet is actually kind of a drag. I'd actually rather read than spend time waiting for a video to play. So that explains why I've edited this so much. I'm basically taking something that took about 22 minutes and cropping it down to about 11 minutes. What I want to do is get all these machines to the same state where I have PowerShell open and Windows Explorer open so I can access these scripts. You'll see me just kind of clicking through here, opening Windows Explorer so I can get to the script. I'm actually pinning PowerShell to the taskbar so that I can just right click and say run as administrator and we'll get all four of these machines in that same state. Now let's begin uh, running the local script on Tucson domain controller one. This script's going to assign an IP address, change the DVD drive to Z, and format the secondary volume and apply names to the volumes. It will rename the computer and restart. At that point, we know the IP address. Uh, RDP is already enabled because we did that to the base image. 
and we'll be able to access Tucson Domain Controller 1 via RDP. So here we go. When you're right clicking in PowerShell you have to be careful because sometimes you right click and you don't see it do something so you right click again. Actually in this instance I did paste the same set of commands twice so what you won't see is you won't see the error but what you will see is that I'll have to manually exit out of disk part to get back in. Yeah, see there it went again. Oh. So here I'll have to type exit to get out of disk part and run the next set of commands. Basically format the F drive and name the volumes, rename the machine, and restart. That's one of the things about scripting. You have to be careful to monitor closely. Make sure you look and see where you left off. Make sure you address any errors that you might see crop up. You might have an error in your script. You might have pasted something twice. You might have pasted the wrong thing on the wrong machine. Scripting does enable you to make a lot of mistakes really quickly. So hopefully you can write scripts to fix those mistakes quickly as well. Okay, we're just ripping through, going on to Tucson ICA1, getting it ready for RDP. It helps to arrange things on the screen so that you can see the uh, windows that you need to access cleanly and just click back and forth. That went well, waiting for disk part to start up. There we go, disk part started, so now we can add that volume, assign it a drive letter. Now we can format the F drive and name the volumes, rename the server, and restart. We're just keeping going to keep plowing through here I'm actually going to RDP back into Tucson DC1 so we can see it is RDP ready and I'm going to move it to the node in the remote desktop connection manager for the domain that it will be in that way I can keep tabs on which machines are ready for RDP which machines are in the correct uh, node in the remote desktop connection manager for the lab scenario yeah, I jump around a lot. So here I'm going on to the Phoenix DC, going to do basically the same thing. Run the scripts, get it ready. Looks like Tucson ICA has rebooted, so I'm going to RDP to it. Drag it over to the appropriate node in uh, Remote Desktop Connection Manager so that I know that it's ready. As far as setting up the initial lab, uh, Tucson ICA1, the last step in the script here is to join the domain, which we haven't installed yet. We'll get into that in the next video. Hoping that'll be a shorter video, install the Active Directory domains and finish uh, assembling the lab. Okay, we're back to Phoenix DC1, signing an IP address, creating the volume, giving it a drive letter, changing the DVD drive to Z. Best way to enforce your standards is by scripting. Uh, then you can rewrite your document based on the script to explain what the standard is. Um, but I find that scripting is the best way to achieve the same result over and over and over again in a very consistent and reliable manner. When people look back at your work they'll see, wow, he named the drive this every time. That drive letters F. The DVD drive is Z. Uh, the reason I like Z is it gives you lots of other drive letters in case you need them. Uh, if you've ever tried to make the D drive D, but D is already taken by the DVD drive, then you've got to change two drive letters. It, it gets frustrating. Uh, your time is valuable. 
and so you want to make things you want to make the computers do what you want them to do rather than making them frustrate you and <laughs> stymieing things up as they always as computers always do okay we're coming very close to the end here getting uh, Phoenix ICA1 uh, IP address set drive letters disk volumes disk labels and you'll see me RDP into Phoenix ice uh, DC one here shortly Again, this was about 22 minutes of effort. I've compressed this into about 11 minutes of video. Okay, there you see me uh, RDP into Phoenix v DC1, and I've moved it to its appropriate node for the lab scenario. I like to close out each of the console windows in Hyper-V so that I can keep tabs of where I'm at when I'm looking at the Hyper-V as well. Yeah, Phoenix DC1 starting up. Okay, Phoenix ICA one's ready move it to the appropriate node in the remote desktop connection manager and we're ready for the next step which will be deploying active directory on Tucson DC1 and Phoenix DC1 thank you